This is the FX30, which is the best cinema camera for the money. It shares the exact same build and functionality as the FX3. But this, this is the perfect cinema rig for the FX30, turning it from a beast into an absolute workhorse. Today I want to show you guys how I've rigged out my FX30 and why you guys should too. So let's just jump right into it. Before we get started with today's video, I want to lay down a few ground rules I had before I decided to build or rig out my FX30 to accommodate for my needs. Number one is I really wanted to include this top handle because of the audio quality. This is because you get two XLR connections at 24 bit and a frequency of 48 Hertz. This also allows you to record four channels internally within the camera. Now it was a challenge to attach the monitor to the top handle, but I did find a great solution without the monitor getting in the way. The second ground rule I had was it had to be functional and also modular. So each component of this FX30 slash FX free rig has been designed to make the camera more functional while not getting in the way. Also, I needed the ability to strip the camera down to a smaller compact camera or even a vertical build. Lastly, it had to be sturdy and stable. It also has to have the center of gravity in the middle of the camera. This is really important for having a more ergonomical grip on the camera and also makes the footage much more stable. All right, let's jump into the build of this FX30 rig. Let's start with the cage itself. I'm using this cage from Newer. The reason I like this cage, it gives the most access to all of the different modularity features. So it gives access to all of the FX30's buttons and none of the tele lights are blocked in which some other cages that's not the case. Another reason why I love this cage is that it has multiple angle points into the camera itself. You have three points, meaning that it's not gonna slip around and it's also very comfortable to hold. While I'm attaching this cage, guys, it would be a great time to subscribe to the channel and also check out the description to pick up a free demo LUT and also a Lightroom preset. The lens that I'm using on my FX30 is the Sigma 24 to 70, which is a full frame lens but I really love the focal length after the crop factor of a 35 to 105. I've just found that that focal length is very versatile for the work that I do. If I want a shallower depth of field or I want to go wider or have better low light options, then I actually have a few recommendations. For ultra wide, I have this nine millimeter from Lauer giving you about a 13 millimeter full frame. This lens doesn't have any distortion and it's super small and compact. Next is one of my favorite lenses for Sony APS-C and that's the 13mm from Viltrox giving you the 20mm full frame field of view. This lens is really really good, it's sharp and it has pretty much no distortion and it has really great autofocus. The next three are from Sigma, that's the 16mm, the 23mm and the 56mm. These all have an f1.4 aperture and they give me the full frame field of view of 24, 35 and 85mm. These lenses are just great sharp lenses with decent autofocus. A quick reminder that all of the gear mentioned in today's video, there is direct Amazon links down below. For keeping my shutter speed double that of my frame rate, I use two different types of NDs, both from Nissi. The first one is their Swift system. This is the one that I use for my run and gun setup. It's great as it's fast to attach the lens. If you want a mist filter, you can attach it easily. And if the one to five stops isn't enough, then you just directly attach this five to nine stop onto it. You can also stack a mist filter on top of that as well. So I really like this filter system as it's super modular. For when I want more control over my flares and contrast, I use Nissi's C5 matte box. This matte box is perfect as it actually has the ND glass stacked right up against the lens. This is a major problem with other matte boxes from other companies because when it's not right up against the glass of the lens, 
you can have a gap which will cause reflection in your footage. The kit that I bought comes with a one to five stop ND and has easing control on the top. And to get that five to nine stop, all you do is you attach the solid four stop into the tray and then just slide it in front of the one to five stop ND. That will give you a five to nine stop. The main reason why I only use Nissi ND filters is because they don't have any of that green or magenta color shift. And I haven't noticed any cross polarization even on super wide lenses like I'm using a 13 millimeter right now with the Swiss system and there's no cross polarization in the corners next is the top handle from Sony and before we attach this we first need to add these two items from small rig. the top handle isn't the best design and this fixes a few of the issues this extends the grip making it strong and sturdy and also adds a NATO rail on the top which is important to attach the monitor to I spent the longest time trying to figure out how to attach the monitor to this top handle handle and this is the best way I found. It's a friction arm from newer that has a NATO rail on the bottom with a monitor mount on top making it easy to attach my monitor which is the Action 5 from Small HD. Now from my personal experience using monitors there's only two brands I can recommend and that's Small HD or Port Keys. This one's super basic it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles but I really just need to know my exposure, my white balance, and also my focus. And this one's great as it does have false color and also RE false color. I don't actually import my S-Log3 LUTs into the monitor. I just have them imported into my FX30. And I just have a clean HMI feed while keeping my settings and touch the focus on the camera's LCD screen. These are my own S-Log3 LUTs, which are linked in the description down below. I have a base look and also five creative looks. Saving time in the color grading process, they are compatible with all Sony cameras and editing software. And for you guys watching this video, I've given you guys 10% off, use the code GERARD10. I use this red coiled HMI to connect the monitor between the camera. To power the monitor for run and gun setups, I use this small MPF battery that's from newer, or I'll use my V-mount, which I'll show you guys shortly. Lastly, for my main compact shotgun slash scratch audio, I use the DDS Mic 2S. And then this compact XLR to XLR cable that just fits perfectly and is completely out of the way. I'll leave a link down in the description down below for this because this is a must have. This mic is so small and compact and it just sounds great. Longer mics will show up in your shot like using wider lenses like my nine millimeter. And I do have this dead cat that I've attached from Amazon as I'm mostly shooting outdoors and this removes any wind and noise. So this right here is my compact run and gun setup. And now we'll move into my rig that I use for full day shoots. And this one is actually a little bit more stable. To attach the V-mount battery, small rig have this great design that has removed the need for rails. And basically all you do is you flip out the screen and it slides onto the Arca Swiss plate of the newer cage and that's it. Now you can attach the small rig mini V-mount battery and you can also extend or retract the plate. These batteries are great. I have two of these 99 watt hour versions and one of these batteries will basically power the camera and the monitor all day. There is the odd occasion that I will reach for my spare 99 watt hour version. To power the monitor, I remove the battery and connect this DCI cable to the small rig battery. And for the camera, I don't actually use a dummy battery as that can cause damage to the camera. So I actually have a Sony battery inside the camera and then I just trickle charge it using a USB-C cable. This USB-C cable is perfect as it is completely out of the way and it is the correct length. So I'll leave that in the link down below. And I also use this small rig cable organizer. On the bottom of the small rig plate is another Arca Swiss plate. But because this rig is a bit heavy, I have this Manfrotto plate from newer that attaches to my newer monopod and tripods. It also gives a stable base so the camera won't tip over. Then finally, I put the C5 matte box on from Nissi. I also use this follow focus system from newer and I do put this side handle on that protects all of the cables coming out of the camera and just adds to the stability of the camera. So that is my FX30 rig build and this camera is just perfect for the work that I need to do. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and any questions, hit me up in the comment section down below. Remember everything mentioned in this video, there is links in the description down below and also get 10% off my S-Log free LUTs using S-Log 10. Remember to subscribe to not miss a video and if you want to see how well the FX30 competes against the Red Komodo, I made a video about it, so go watch that here.